welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch cold blue canvas and I am freezing, my goodness. Somebody give me a coat. You're obviously excited about painting this one. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Make sure you get all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, we're back again. It's Paint with Josh. Look at that, Paint with Josh back in the studio with you today. I know I have all these colors on the palette, but we're just gonna use three of them today. It's gonna be a blue, black, and white painting. So let's show you what we've done so far. I've taken my acrylic white gesso. Whoop. There we go, <laughs> looks a lot like that. And we've covered our entire canvas with acrylic white gesso, just because I just, you can never trust it straight from the store, whether or not it's been gessoed or not, right? I've had some that have just gone bad because they soak in the liquid white too quickly. It starts to dry, you don't know what's happening. It's a, it's a bad scene. So I'm gonna show you now what we're gonna do now that we're ready to paint our scene, now that our, our white gesso is completely dry, we're ready to paint. We're gonna put on our Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. Now this paint is very wet and slick and it's gonna allow all of our thick oil paints to blend across the canvas. I don't wanna put it all in one spot right away. I like to dump some off the brush and then just start to work it. Right, stretch it all the way across the canvas. And now that we've covered it with that, uh, that gesso, it's very light, very smooth. Our brush just glides across it. It's fantastic. Let's get a little bit more of the liquid white. We'll come down in here. And we gotta work it into our whole canvas and stretch it. You don't need it to be super thick. If it's really thick and sticky, it's not gonna help, right? More is not better. I'm gonna come over here, make sure we got everything. I like looking at it from every single angle. And what we do is we dip into the lid of the jar and that way we don't get too much liquid white. And I understand if you already know how to liquid white your canvas, then feel free to skip forward just a couple minutes and we'll be ready to paint, right? So we like to show everybody how to do every single thing. So if this is the first time you're watching a Paint With Josh video, tell us what time it is where you're watching, what's your favorite sandwich, and uh, if you're excited just to learn. Sorry, we get a little caught in the painting sometimes. Let's see. So if this is your first video, you are in the luck because it's gonna be a nice, easy little three color video. Nice, simple little thing. Last little bit of liquid white. I'm only using small, small, small amounts. Stretching it across the canvas as far as we can get it to stretch. And that way every single bit is nice and covered and wet and slick and ready to go. Just like that, go back and forth across the whole thing one more time and then we'll throw some paint on this guy. All right, test it, always test it. Make sure you can see the dimples in the canvas. You can test different areas, right? It's a little bit thinner down here, that's okay. Over here's good, over there's good. Everywhere's good on our canvas. Nice and thin and even across the whole thing. Now I'm gonna save a little bit of the liquid white that's in the jar right here. We're gonna put that off to the side. We'll use it later for our highlights. Let's wash this brush off. We use odorless mineral spirits inside of our gently used thick plastic cups. And I dip it in, kind of shake off the excess inside by twisting it back and forth, and then shake it into a can, and then into the old beater bucket. Looks a lot like this, right? You hear the noise? That's when we have fun. We have a lot of fun down here in the bucket, and it cleans and dries our brush. But just in case, I always like to dab it on a paper towel. Now, let's get ready to throw some paint on the canvas. Then we're gonna throw together a nice blue sky scene, a lot of clouds, mountains, mist. You guys have already seen it. I'm literally about to paint it right now. It's a recreation of an old scene. We're not looking at any reference photo, just straight out of memory. So we're gonna use our phthalo blue, our midnight black, and our titanium white, and we're gonna go through, it's gonna be gorgeous. So now again, we're gonna go through all the colors. I'm gonna show you everything we need to do. So let's go into our blue, just a little bit of the blue, and a little bit of the white. I don't wanna have too much blue. It doesn't need to be so dark, right? So we wanna have differences in our sky. So we're gonna come up here, just start laying in a little bit of our blue section. Doesn't need to be crazy, doesn't even have to cover because we're gonna stretch it, right? We're gonna blend it. Why don't we come over here, let's get a little bit darker blues. We're pushing a little bit harder into the canvas, maybe leaving some areas white, some areas not so white. Just blending it away. All right, let's get a little bit of our blue, a little bit of our black. And then we'll come in from the side over here. Look at the difference when you add that black. It just gets a little bit darker, a little more stormy. A little more stormy. Let's take our black and our blue. Maybe we'll leave that whole section white underneath. Just like that. Just by blending back and forth, it's fantastic, right? Leaving these big white puffy areas for our big white puffy clouds. Anywhere you wanna make a little bit more dark, 
add that little bit of black or a little bit darker blue. Again, just a little couple little dabs. That's all we really need. Now we're gonna come from the bottom here. I'm gonna start again with that lighter color. Just kind of swiping in from the side. Right over here. Let me grab our black, our blue, and come in from this side at the bottom. Let's see. A little bit more color on the brush. There we go. I'm gonna swipe across. Straight across, just like that. Don't even need to meet them in the middle. Nice and straight. Maybe this guy will come across this way, leaving that nice little shiny little area. All right, now we'll wash our brush off very simply and easily. We've got this gorgeous sky just waiting to pop out. Just a fantastic little thing right there. Now we're gonna use that same brush, nice and dry, dabbed it on our paper towel. We're gonna come back in here, start in our light areas just on the edge. Drag some of the, uh, the blue in, some of the white out, blue in, white out, leaving little differences very lightly around the edge. Otherwise, it's going to take up all of our little white area. Very light little strokes, just blending out any little bit, leaving that center area pretty white. You have this nice, gorgeous little bit of cloud. Look at this dark underside right here. Very cool little piece starting to work together. Now we're gonna come in, we're gonna to start to soften everything. And remember, all these dark colors wanna grow down into our light areas. So very light strokes around our light areas. Otherwise it will grow, Ooh, you hear that spooky sound? It's very windy today outside. It's very Halloween-y and spooky. Gonna cover the edges of our canvas in blue, just so it's gorgeous around the entire thing. And it only takes a few seconds to finish the edge of your canvas. It helps just make it more done in my eyes, right? Very softly across here. We'll come back up here and just start to mix crisscross strokes, just like that. Again, very lightly around the edges of our light area. Don't want to lose it all, right? You're going to lose a little bit of it, but don't have to lose all of it. Again, we're going to come in here anywhere that we were, just very lightly blending all of those rough areas. And now all of a sudden we have this blue sky filled with all these different blues, different hues, different areas of dark and light. It's fantastic. All right, and again, across the bottom, we don't need to do much. You could leave it as water or snow or whatever we get into. Again, you've already seen it. I'm literally painting it as we go, right? Fantastic little thing. Cool little sky, beautiful little painting. And then we can decide what we wanna do in very softly over those light areas. Otherwise it wants to all blend away. And then you can just back and forth. I love that sound. Fantastic. Let's wash that brush off. Right into the cup, into the can, into the bucket. Fantastic. Look at that. All right, now we can decide all sorts of things. What are we gonna plan our scene out? Does it have clouds, does it not? Of course it does. Now let's get two fan brushes, okay? I like, they don't even have to be the same size. This is a size 10, that's a size 12, doesn't even matter. All I want is one for dark and one for light. These are GAC Doctor fan brushes, G-A-C-D-R. Is that how you find those on my Amazon? I have them in my Amazon, uh, Affiliate shop, I have them on my wish list. They're fantastic little hog hair brushes. So let's take one. We're gonna make our dark kind of cloud color. So let's get a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the black, again, a little bit of the white. We don't need it to be super dark, right? And it doesn't have to be super light either because it's gonna mix with all the white paint that's underneath all these colors. So just a little difference, right? Maybe up underneath here, you just have that little dark area. Bounce it in, mush the brush. All crazily, get all this crazy mush in there. Gonna grab our one inch brush or your two inch, doesn't whatever you're, you know, whatever one you're more comfortable with, doesn't matter. All it does is make it nice and soft. Woo, you get these cool little bits of shadow up there. It's fantastic. Come in with our light brush, right? Get our white paint. I like getting it on both corners, that way you can turn the brush over. Maybe up in there, you kind of pop in our little bit of whiter cloud. Dump down, turn the brush over, add a little bit of white underneath, leaving areas for it to grow. That's what no one else tells you. It's gonna grow, look at it grow down. And with variations of pressure, back and forth, in and out, you can blend them away, you can leave them nice and bright and thick and all sorts of stuff. Take our two inch brush, 
very lightly, swipe it up, swipe it to the side. It just softens those clouds way off in the distance. Very cool. And again, you can always come in, blend them out, make them softer, extend them, change what you don't like. If it's a little bit too thick or a little not, go back in, mix it up. They're gorgeous. All a cloud is, is just a bunch of jumbled up water vapor floating around the air up there, getting blown around by the wind. All right, let's take a little bit of this white. We're going to highlight this whiter area, just accentuating. And we got this giant cloud that lives out there, just floats around all day, right? Now remember, all this paint's going to grow down, so leave a little bit of an area. And we come in over here, we can grow that one down over the top of that shadow. All right, same blue brush that we've been using. Very light pressure. If you push too hard, it's going to go away, be gone forever. Up here, we're kind of pulling it up and away, letting it get misty up at the top, right? Look at that, gorgeous. Pushing it away from all that color, like the wind's just blowing it. Very cool. Mixing it up down here, but trying not to let these two areas of white touch. See that little bit of blue in the center right there? The little bits of blue down here. Now those are our separators. You don't want to lose your separator. It helps us, immensely helps us. Look at that, Woo! That's a cloud and a half. Take our same two inch brush, flatten it up from the bottom to the top, from the left to the right or the right to the left, however yours is sitting. Fantastic, cool little bit of cloud back there. Very simply, very easily done in just a few minutes, right? We're gonna take and wash these fan brushes off now. Let's get that into the old bucket. Get all the nasty blue paint off of there. And we'll have some nice clean utensils to work with. Right, right into the bucket, right off, beautiful. Fantastic. Let's clean the one inch brush as well. Probably end up cutting all this out. All right, now we're gonna take a knife. You can use the big knife or the small knife or a plastic knife or a butter knife or a shoe, it doesn't matter. Whatever you wanna do is uh, what it's gonna look like, right? So let's mix up our black and blue. Right? Try not to grab any of that green that's next to it, or the crimson, see? Black and blue, gonna mix it up because those are the only two dark colors we have. And then we're going to lighten it with a little bit of white. Differences, right? Maybe take a little bit more black, put that in that section. We're gonna have two different areas. We're gonna have a lighter section and we're gonna have a darker section over here. Okay, fantastic. Remember, whatever it is, it's gonna mix with the light colors that are up here on our canvas. So we're gonna wipe the knife off nice and clean and decide where we want our giant mountains to live. Maybe we have a further away mountain, which is why we have this lighter colored paint. So we'll scrape up a little bit of that. Look at that, just nasty little roll. Maybe way off back here, there was a little mountain. Just by bouncing the knife, turning it, maybe it rolled down, way off back there, right? I never like having mine just a perfect, straight, like pyramidal shape. So I add a couple little, little things. Little bits, little imperfections that make it look very cool. Take the rest of that paint and throw it down there, it's fine. <laughs> Take our one inch brush, just depending on how you pull your brush is depending on what your mountain is gonna look like. So we're gonna pull it down, maybe come down this way, maybe it turns over here, starts going off to the side, bouncing it down, very cool. All right, all depends on what it looks like and then you can start to shape it. So let's go back to some of those shadows, all right? Same shadows we had over here. Let's imagine all of our light coming from this side. So maybe on the back side of him, we've got some little darker bits just by bouncing the knife, letting it roll down, just hanging out all back here. All these very cool little dark areas where our mountain can, all of our little mountain critters live, all right? Now we'll come back. We're gonna scrape up some white and some of that blue that we made just to mix up a little bit of a, just an off white kind of color. Right? It's not perfectly white, but it will stand out as white when we put it back here against all these dark colors. All right, we come around, start to bounce, shake. Look at how the knife just starts to break all on its own. The paint just starts to happen with the right amount of pressure. You can do all sorts of things. Look, just pulling it down, scrape up a little bit, come inside, pull it off, barely touching. And allowing all the paint to break like that, it's exactly what you want to see. All right, and we came down this way. You can start to change the ridge of your mountain as it starts to flow down and change. Very cool. Very simply done. A little bit of our, our two-inch brush in the same direction that we went. So if we come over here, we got to go this direction. 
right? It just kind of softens that paint. Don't worry about anything back here. You can even take, maybe there's the smallest little bit, a little light that happened way back there. Come in with our little shadowy colors again. And just push that guy back. Change the whole shape of the mountain even. Bam, very cool. Just like that. Very neat. You know what? And again, if you don't like it, you can come in and change it. Very simply, very easily. Go in, replace what you don't like. And that is that. Right? Very lightly, just spread that guy out. Just down onto the horizon. Very cool. Like those clouds are climbing up the tip top of the mountain. Very neat. It's missing just a little bit of blue though. So let's get a little bit of that white and our blue in there because I love having our little bits of blue kind of lit up shadowy areas, right? Doesn't all have to be the same amount of darkness. Fantastic. Gorgeous. Right? Come in, shake these guys up a little bit so they're not so bright. All it does is just change it, give you a few more little pieces of detail back there. Now we're gonna come over here and grab a little bit more of the black, a little bit more of the blue. Mix that up over here into our darker pile, and this will be our more close-up mountain. So I don't want to lose all of my gorgeous clouds, though. Those are fantastic. All right, maybe this guy cut in front of this guy over here. And just being a little bit darker helps him stand out as closer than the existing mountain before. Look at him right there, right into all those little areas where it starts to get very thin, very foggy, and you can pop a whole other piece of mountain out here. And the reason I'm covering that guy is because I don't want to lose all of our, our little bit of cloud back here, but I do want to have a multi-layered mountain. See what I mean? So instead of losing all of the cloud, kind of lose this guy, push him back a little bit. Look at that. Very cool. Now, depending on how you pull your clouds and you pull your mountain down is what it's going to look like, right? Which is why I like to dump paint in different areas. Okay, and we come back here. Look at this mountain, how much darker it is. Its initial darker shadow is much darker than the original mountain behind, which pushes that mountain backwards. Very cool. All right, we're gonna come around here. Depending on how we pull our brush, depends on what the mountain looks like. Maybe it comes down that way. A little bit of a, a little ridge right there, right? Come into here, into the more shadowy side of the mountain. Very cool. Pull it off into nothing, right? We're all, we're just sitting on top of nothing right now. We're building it as we go. And that's what's so fun. You can literally move mountains, change the scenery, just all based on your poles of your brush, right? What direction were you swiping at that time? Very, very neat. You see how I saved some of that dark cloud back there? Can't just cover everything. They can't all be nice, gorgeous, beautiful white clouds all the time. I like to have a little bit of spookiness in there. A little bit of realism. Is there a storm on the horizon? Is it coming towards us? Who knows? Now look at all these beautiful details that we've created with our mountain. All we have to do is come back and follow our guidelines, right? We've already lined ourselves up for success right there. So let's get our little bit of white. This is going to be our blue shadow. So we're going to grab our blue, mix it in with that white, not over mixing it. So there's differences, there's different colors, all sorts of different things. Now we need to come back. Let's get a little bit of blue a little bit of black, a little teeny bit of white. We're gonna have our shadow number two, right? Shadow one, shadow two, and then our dark pile will be shadow number three. And we'll rock and roll with those shadows. Now, let's put shadow one back over here. All right, this nice, soft, light blue, fantastic little thing, leading into a deeper, darker shadow. Maybe a little bit darker blues coming down our little a little alley that way. And then you can even go into the deepest, darkest of our colors, maybe down around the bottom. And that's how you can build your shadows and build your mountain like that. Very simply and easily. And I know we do it quickly. Again, we're leaving the right hand side of everything for our beautiful white highlights. And there's a little bit of shadow on that ridge over there. And it's gonna roll and it's gonna bounce and it's gonna do all sorts of things. The more we mix it, the more it's gonna be more it'll go away. Let's take some of our shadows on the back side of our ridge, shadow number one, right, our lightest one, into shadow number two, a little bit darker. So we come down a little bit more into shadow number three. And you get that deep darkness down around the bottom of our mountain, right? Then you can go back in, literally go from the top to the bottom with a couple swipes, 
and it will kind of merge itself for you. It's very, very cool little technique I found. Hopefully you guys, it's easy for you to do. A little bit of blue, just on the edge, a little bit of shadow too, underneath, a little bit, not a whole lot. Doesn't need to be real dark down here. Even that's too much right there. Too much shadow too. So we'll scrape it, come up here. Let's mix it one more time so it's not so dark. There we go. Couple little things and then grab it from the top, pull it down and it'll blend itself in the areas that it wants to be dark. It can be dark, it can be light, but you gotta have it work its way. So that's where we go one, twos, and threes, right? Our little bit of darker shadow, our three, shadow three down here. Let it fall off into nothing. Well, we can make our mountain go forever over here. We really could. All right, now let's come in and grab our, our highlights. Okay, we're gonna go bright white. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that blue. Let's come down here for the highlights. So again, it's not perfectly white, but it will stand out as white as we go across all those dark colors. Scrape up a little bit, just like that. Right on the edge of the knife, come back up here, touch the canvas and just start moving. Just start bouncing and moving until you have no more paint left. Where are we at? Down here, come over here. All right? don't even have to connect every single piece of all of our little different colors staying around the edge of that shadow that we put there. So we could come up here, have another little ridge Maybe it starts to flow off this way. It starts to mix in with our shadow three over there. All these little different colors, little different things going on, all from just three colors. It's all we're using. All right, maybe we come up here, start to drop in our highlight again. You can build your mountain. Don't cover all these little things. All those little differences, they're fantastic. Maybe a little shadow two inside that guy. Just a couple little dibs and dreads, just to, just to change it enough, right? Woo, that is fire. A little tiny bit of our highlight, maybe just caress the top of this guy. That was literally it from behind the, the mountain on the other side. Okay, come back, little highlight over here, touch and just start bouncing, let it roll, let it bounce, let it jiggle. Very, very, very small amount of pressure. Scrape up the last little bit of our highlight that we have over here. And who knows, maybe it started to come down very cool, very light, very easy little things, very simply changed as well. Okay, take our brush, again, going from the bottom up to the top, softening all those. Look at the differences between these and these now. See what I mean? Let it soften them. Makes it just a little bit blurry, a little further away, off in the distance. And you know what's fun too? You take a little bit of our white color, put it down back here in our highlight section, and every so often, you can drop just a little, little flick, a little flick of that lighter snow off the edge. Kind of makes your edge a little bit more round. Right, take our two inch brush, so soft, so soft in that same angle downwards, right? Now we're gonna come in. Let's just scrape up any more little bit of white that we had, just so we have a nice bit of fog, right? Just gonna mix in a little bit of white, just smooshing it on. Smush it, smush it, just like we're making a big old cloud at the bottom of this thing. Take our one inch brush, very lightly, start to make our mist, right? And this is when you can go above your horizon, okay? You don't have to be, doesn't have to be this perfect thing. You can go up and above it, get all that mist. Where's the mist coming from? Start to mix in our little bits of snow down here, very softly, just little circles. Which is why you don't need a whole lot of shadow and a whole lot of color, right? And what's cool over here, if you want to do it a different way, take a little bit of our white paint, tap it onto your brush over there, just like that. And we'll come in, start tapping in little bits of foam that are just a little bit, a little bit more dense, a little bit brighter, right? And again, we're just gonna tap, tap, tap all of these little bits, leaving some of that darkness in there, some of our highlight coming up, grabbing some of our mountain, some of the snow, pulling it down, turning our brush, coming over this way. Make all of our mist, just like that. And then you can take it with your brush. Just mix it up a little bit. That's all I ever do. I never liked it to be this straight, just perfect thing. So what we can do is decide what we're gonna have in our foreground. So nice and soft. 
Whoosh, whew. Fantastic. So, two different mountains very easily. All right, so what we'll do here is again, tap into our white and maybe on this side, we'll come over and just put in a little bit of our foggy white off in the back, right? Again, very lightly mixing. So we don't wanna overdo the mixing. You wanna have those differences, those little bits of difference in color back there, fantastic. Now we're gonna take our dark colored brush. We're gonna go into that black and blue. All right, just like that. Our shadow three, our black and blue, just regular straight up darkness, right? Grab a little bit of our white to lighten it. Because this tree that we're painting is a little bit further away, so we need to make it a little bit lighter in color. There we go. On both edges of the brush, we're gonna set our palette down. We're gonna come over here. And depending on where you start, will determine what your scene is gonna look like, right? We know we're gonna slope off to the right over here. So let's put one tree who knows, maybe off in this kind of bare section where we didn't really put a whole lot of paint and you just go straight down with your tree, bam, just like that. Depending on how far you go down, depends on how big your tree is gonna look, right? So let's grab a little bit of our paint just to make sure our brush is nice and, and firm and looks like an old ax blade and just start popping up. You touch the corner, push up, see what I mean? Touch the corner, push up. And as you start to bounce around back and forth, you start to build little trees, just like that. Fantastic, right? A little bit of darkness down around the bottom. So when we take our guy over here and we start to slide off, now we've decided where our horizon is and what is living over here, right? Never like it to be perfectly straight either. Slide it off that way. And the reason for all this mist is it's gonna create a lot of depth and distance Again, back into our black and blue on both sides of the brush. Right here in our dark section, okay? We're gonna come over, maybe our next little tree lived about right here, just a little bit taller than our peak of our mountain right there. Come down, remember, he's gotta come down a little bit further than this guy to show he's closer to us, right? So we're gonna come back here, grab up our black and blue, come back in, tap upwards, all right? You choose an area that's not very thick, filled with our white paint back there, and that's so that this paint will stick. If it doesn't stick, take a little bit of your paint thinner, just dip in your brush, just the smallest little, teeniest, tiniest little bit, and that will help your paints flow across all that thicker paint back there. All right, don't wanna make the, the branches too big. We're gonna start popping out, pushing in, maybe turn the brush over, start popping out, and then when we get down to the bottom, we know we've got a nice little tree down here. Again, a little bit extra color down around the bottom so we have something to pull outwards, right? Creating what we want our thing to look like. So, and then we can decide what we're, where we're gonna, where's our horizon, where's he gonna sit? Down there, we have all of our shadows just pulling off this way. Very soft, very cool, right? Then we can go back in and highlight it with our snow too. And pull them off just a little bit to the side. Just a little bit. Just shows us getting closer and closer and closer. And we don't really have to paint the snow off in the distance. It's kind of implied snow back there. So, but if we do want to have a little bit of difference in color, let's grab a new clean brush, fill it full of our white paint, just pulling it down in one direction, filling it up, right? And then we'll come in here to this guy. Right? Long strokes. Damn, the more and more you go over it, the more it's gonna go away, the more it's gonna change. Let it change, just like that. Very, very cool. All right, shows us other, that this other tree is closer. We can see more of the detail in the snow. We can see more of everything. It's fantastic. All right, take a little bit of that dark and pull them back out into our little bit of shadow. Very cool. All our spooky noises go off. Very neat. Look at all these little differences though. The blue, the gray, the white. Fantastic. Fantastic. You can put just the tiniest little bit off in the distance, but we gotta leave an area that's blue in between. So don't do too much. Very lightly, very softly, way off. Way off. And 
and just make it soft, just like that. Just so you have a little bit of difference back there is all you really need. And we'll put our one other tree right here. You know what, actually this guy looks like he might need a little friend. He might need just a little baby brother. He's gotta show somebody the ropes. So let's give him a little friend. Filling up our brush again, just like that. And we'll come over here and this guy's gonna be a little shorter. All right, so we'll put him down there. Just like that, come in, popping up with our brush again. Bouncing so it makes these cool little shapes, All right? If you push your brush in too hard at the wrong angle, you're not gonna appreciate the shape that comes out. So be gentle with it, take your time, push it in, dab it, and then you got a cool little bit of tree back in here. Make sure they're very dark and you can't see through them though. You don't wanna see through these trees. There we go. Take the bottom of them, pull them out. Fantastic, let's make our last big tree and the last of our dark colors, okay? We need a lot of paint for this. So the black, the blue, let's see, drag it down. I'm trying to stay away from our other colors over here. And then we'll go back and highlight all these guys. So this guy's gotta be a little bit taller than our mountain in order for him to make sense that he's the big daddy boss tree. So we're gonna come down like that. Just a, just a guideline for our, our branches, right? Doesn't have to be super thick, just a guideline. We're gonna go back, load up our brush with paint again and come over here to the side, tapping upwards. Little, very, very small amount of pressure as we tap upwards. And then as we start to go down, we can start to build the tree out. Right? Maybe skip a little section because, oh, there was a bigger branch over there that wanted to grow. Right? And we'll come down, just popping it in. Don't want to go too crazy. Every so often you can have it pop out a little bit wider, but then reel it back in. Reel it in. Don't want to have them be, all be the same length either. I never like that when they're all the same and it just looks like a column. But then again, you don't want to grow them out too big. So it's a it's a dangerous game we play, right? There we go. Dabbing it in, dabbing it in. Let's load up a little bit more color. Because as it starts to get low, as your brush starts to get low, it starts to flatten out. You don't get as many thick little tree branches that are going to grab on to all of our highlight and stuff. So again, we don't even have to go all the way to the bottom. I don't want this one to go off the canvas. Come over here, adding in our little bit of thicker branches. Just having it make sense. Looks even all the way up, except we have a few anomalies that pop out. Very cool. All right, let's get rid of all of that dark color off of that brush now. It is no longer needed. You have served your purpose, sir. All right, I'm gonna come over here again, taking our, our base and just blending it out. Same sort of angle as these other ones. You know what I mean? Doesn't have to be exactly the same. It can blend in over here. You can have a little bit of a shadowy area. You can push it, you know, until your other little hill makes sense. All up to you what you want it to look like. But again, all that mist off in the distance. We have our straight lines back there. They're indicating all of our, our horizon. It's fantastic. Fantastic, right? Very cool. And I go, no, we flubbed up right here. It's okay. We'll take that guy and make him into a little bush. A little bit on the edge of our dark brush and just look, we'll just pop in just a mess. Just a mess, that's all you need. A little messy bush. Okay, take the bottom of our little messy bush, pull them out this way and this way. There we go. Don't wanna to use too much, very cool. We've just fixed our little flub up, right? Very simply, very easily, just by adding one more little bit of detail, which is such a neat little thing. All right. Now we're gonna to need to highlight all of these trees. So we're gonna to switch to a smaller brush, okay? This is a size six, and I like using the smaller brushes on the highlights of the trees, because it really gives them a cool feel, right? So we need to get a little bit of our liquid white, and come in here and decide, maybe that guy way off there, he wasn't so pure bright. So let's mix him in with that little bit of blue, maybe a little of our titanium white, just till he looks right. right? It doesn't have to be so super bright. Come over here again, popping in little things, just dabbing up, leaving our little shadows. And these guys off in the distance, they don't need a whole lot of detail, right? Take that guy along the bottom, slide him out. Let's wipe off the brush, go back in, get a little bit more liquid white. And come up here into this section now that's a little bit brighter. 
All right, our liquid white, our pure titanium white. And then we're gonna come to our biggest tree because he's the closest and this is our brightest color. So I'm gonna touch up here. And again, just dabbing on and letting go, right? Can't cover up all of our shadows. So you gotta go over the top of them, right? Just lighting up different little things. And the more you have to push with your brush, the less paint you have on the end. So you need to go back and get some more. Right? Just little teeny tiny pushes, not lighting up every branch. You're never gonna see every single piece of everything, right? Let's flip the brush over now. It'll be nice and bright, sticky. Just lighting up just little areas of our branches, not even the whole side, right? You're never gonna see all the branches of all the trees, no matter what day it is, you'll never see everything. Now we're gonna wipe that off, go back here. It's going to be a little bit darker because our brush had a little bit of that dark color on it. It's got picked up, which is fine because this tree is a little bit further away. So he needs to be a little less bright, a little less detailed, right? As we pop in, just popping up less and less and less as we go. Further away, more detail on this guy. That guy's a little bit softer. Let's turn our brush over, see if we can't get a two for one. All right, just start popping up. Very small little flicks that you just want the lightest little thing to stick on. And if it's too much, then it's not gonna look good. Just like that, very cool, leaving it, leaving it. Don't overdo it. Maybe come over here, see what we can flick onto this guy. Couple little things, couple little bright areas is all you really need. Don't need it all to be crazy. Who knows what that is right there? Who knows? Can you even take our knife? Scrape in a couple little white sticks at the base of those guys. Just little teeny little things. Maybe a little bit bigger on this one over here. Just cool little things that are living underneath our tree. Very neat. Very neat. Now let's grab up our last little bit. Grab our white. And right into our thick titanium white right here. Just in one direction again. And then we're going to grab the base of our tree right here. Really want to pull even out onto your easel down there. Don't lose all that dark color. Those dark, those dark areas are very, very neat. You don't want to lose them all and you don't want to cover all of your highlight down into this area either. It doesn't all have to be the same amount of white. And just like that, you got a very cool little cold scene. Fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed painting this one. It is fan schmastic. And you're like, you can't leave yet, Josh. You haven't done the birds. You're right. So let's get a little bit of our paint thinner into our dark color. And just mix it up very neatly, very, very sharp on the brush. At least I like to have it sharp. In order to make small things, we need a very sharp brush. And we'll come in here. And let's say maybe right off here, you do our three birds. And if you're like, what are the three birds? They represent myself, my wife, and my daughter. Just like that. And they go into every single scene of a paint with Josh. It's the only way we get to travel, and that's no joke. So, very cool. Very neat, I love this one, it turned out fantastic. So let's wash that little brush off there, grab a little bit of our liquid white, and we'll throw our signature down here. That's why you can't make it so super bright. So you'll have an area for your nice bright white signature to show. Just like that, very cool. As we drop everything. Woo, I need my jacket, it's so cold in here. So I'm glad you guys had a good time. I'm glad you tuned in and watched this video. I can't wait to see your version. And until we see you guys again on the next one, take care the rest of a good day and ba -pow, that's it we'll see you guys later bye bye hi welcome back to paint with <laughs> like i'm throwing something at you <laughs> hi guys welcome back to paint <laughs> hi there welcome back to paint with josh today we've done a 16 by 20 inch cold Hey guys, we're back again. Today we have covered our canvas with acrylic white gesso. Let's do that again. I need my coat because it's freezing in here. You're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So grab your supplies. Check the description down below. Grab it. Grab your supplies. Check the description down below to make sure you have all the colors we need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on or do it just like this. Freaking stupid. All right, let's do this. Ready? Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. I am freezing. So you're obviously excited about painting this one. Let's 